So let's talk about the role of Pixie in the OAuth world. So Pixie is an extension for the OAuth authorization code grant, and it is there to protect against uh, specific types of attacks. And it was developed for uh, public clients because they cannot keep a secret confidential. And let's take a look at the original IRC to understand the, the problem it's trying to fix. So let's say you're like on a mobile app and uh, like you do the normal OAuth uh, authorization code flow, right? So you're in the browser, you redirect to the authorization server, you get back the code, and then you want to exchange that code for like an access token. That's how it works. I also have like a video on this if you want to know more details. And now the issue is that specifically like on mobile devices, the last mile, so to say, so passing this authorization code to the right app might be problematic because on an app you don't have or you might not have unique URL schemes. So that means if you have a malicious app installed and you try to redirect, so you try to send uh, the authorization code to the app, then you could just register or a malicious app could just register the same URL schema like the legitimate app and then just steal the code and then exchange it for an access token. And now you have a situation, right? Because now the code was stolen and the legitimate app does not get the token, but now the malicious app has access. So this is like the, the initial challenge that uh, this proof key for code exchange wants to solve. And let's just take a look at how uh, it attempts to do so, because it's a quite an interesting approach. So let's say you have your mobile app here. Wait, let me zoom out a little bit. You have your mobile app here and you have this login with Google button. So what happens is you redirect to the authorization server once you click. And not only do you send like the normal, the normal parameters you would send like client ID, scope, uh, state and so on. We'll talk about it in a second. But also something called a code challenge and a code challenge method. So what is that stuff? So what Pixie says is, okay, I need some additional, uh, I need some additional, I need to add some additional randomness to make sure that only the correct application can use the access token. And to do so, it says, okay, every application before the uh, flow is started makes up like some random string, which is between 43 and 128 characters, so with high entropy. And this is called the so-called code verifier. And then you take the string and you hash it with like some common method. So for example, SHA-256, this is like what, what Pixie supports. Pixie also supports plain, but I mean, that kind of defeats the purpose of having it. Then it's the same like state. Okay, so you take this thing and you hash it and you base 64 URL encode it. And this is called the code challenge. So now you kind of save, you store this plain text somewhere, make sure that it's not accessible. And then you send like this hashed and base64 URL encoded uh, code verifier, which is called the code challenge, to the authorization server. And in addition, you also tell the server which method you used to hash like the plain text. This will become important later. And then what happens is, well, you log in, uh, you say, hey, do you really want to give this application access? Yeah, you will just say yes, okay, it's fine. And then what happens is that you get redirected back like to the application. So remember, this could be like a custom URL schema with the state and with the code, like with the, uh, with the authorization code. And then what you now do is you exchange this code for a token, but in order to exchange this code for a token, you need to send the plain text secret that you made up before. And what this does is it kind of implements some sort of proof of possession because say, even if someone managed to intercept like the initial request of like your, like your request to the URL could be right because it's just in the uh, URL bar of a browser, then this person still cannot use the authorization code. Why? Because now you need to send the original plain text and a hash is a one-way function, so you cannot go back. So at first you send the hash, which is called like the code challenge, and then afterwards to exchange it for the token, you send this code verifier in plain text over HTTPS, of course. 
And then the authorization server takes a look at this code verifier and then it uses the, um, the hash method that you specified in here, in that case SHA-256, hashes it and then checks whether, right, for one, the authorization code is valid and if the hash of this original plain text thing here is the same like in the original, uh, in the first GET request that you sent. And only if that's the case, you return the token. And this is extremely handy because that means even if some malicious application is able to steal this code, then you still cannot get let the token, right? Because you don't have this plain text secret and the uh, this this code verifier. And the or what's new about this is that you actually send the hash of some random string, right? Because you could say, well, hold on a second. Like we also have this state parameter here. Right, and this is typically also sent in the request and it should be like a random string to protect against CSRF. And that is true. So initially you only had like the state parameter. The downside of this is that the URL, like this is it's passed in the front channel, so in the search bar of the browser. And if you pass the plain text, uh, like the plain text value here, if someone manages to read this URL bar, which could be possible, then you cannot protect against this type of attack. So the nice thing about this, about Pixie is that you really generate this secret, you keep it for yourself, and then you only send the hash over like the front channel. And even if that is intercepted, it's fine because there's no way on how you can go back. And that is like the really strong or one of the strong properties uh, that, that you get when you use Pixie. And initially this was there to prevent like authorization code theft, as I just mentioned, but also authorization code interception. So say maybe someone is able to exchange the authorization code, so your authorization code with the attacker's authorization code. And now it just doesn't work anymore because the attacker doesn't know the like plain text code verifier. And this is very good and it protects against these types of attacks and these days like this whole thing pixie is recommended for all flows so like the oauth uh, security current security best practices say okay if you're a public client you must obviously protect against these types of attacks and they recommend like pixie for this and even if you're like a confidential client you should also use it so the bottom line is Make sure like if Pixie is available, just always use it. And this also has like one nice advantage because now the state parameter, like you kind of don't need the value here anymore because Pixie provides the same protection like state and even more, right? Because you, even if someone is able to read the address bar of the browser, still you cannot, uh, you cannot steal or you cannot get the access token. Whereas if that's the case with state and someone can read the plain text state, well, then you might be able to get an access token. Yeah, and now, since this thing is no longer needed, you can use it for other things. So for example, uh, you might say, okay, I have some e-commerce application and after logging in, I want you to redirect to a page where you see all your orders. So you can use this as some custom state, so to say you can pass around so that you know where you can redirect. In fact, you can put like inside of this thing, whatever you want. Yeah, so this is like Pixie. It's a really nice, also maybe take a look at the RC. It's really well done. It's also not that long. Maybe get into the habit of reading RCs. They are really great, very high quality, very precise in their wording. And uh, the overall idea is like very simple. And the RC is also not too technical. So if you want to get into that, I would recommend you you check like this RFC out. It's RFC 7636. Cool. So thank you so much for watching, guys. Let me know whether this explanation was clear. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments down below. Also, if you want to send me a tweet, uh, you can do so by tweeting to at production coder. So again, thank you so much for watching. Leave a like and subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.